I know you got to have a good good one for Jack. Forgive me, Jack. Um, <laughs> yeah. you know, no, one, don't, one no, of my responsibilities go. when I was in the clubhouse, you know, Jack was pitching, and you know, unfortunately, sometimes Jack got pulled out of a game. You know, so one of my responsibilities was to just move everything out of the clubhouse that could be thrown or tossed or kicked if Jack was coming out of the game because when he came back, I mean, he was a very competitive man, right? And he just had a blow off steam. So we just left him to his own devices and came back. And Did you ever get hit with anything? Never. Never. I chair. was always out before he got in. No. <laughs> now, now, now here's your chance. I mean, no holding back. You know, I, I got to take my, you know, medicine too. So, you know, now's your chance to tell one about me. Well, I, I got two stories about Dan, but my first one, uh, Jim Smakel wanted to go to the Michael Jackson concert. Uh, Dan happened to walk in behind us and overheard the conversation. And uh, I asked Jim how much were the uh, ticket prices. And without even thinking, Dan put the money out. And he says, oh, yeah, you did. And he said, as long as, long as you don't tell your girlfriend that I paid for them, then, it's, then I'm going to pay for it. And so I went to the concert. And it ended up being my wife for sale now. But we went to the concert on your behalf. But I think the, the, the funnest thing after the games, we used to go down the street here to Casey's, and Dan was the king of the jukebox. Oh, and yeah. he would go behind yeah. the bar. And uh, But if somebody played a song Dan didn't like, he hit the button, and everyone went crazy. And, <laughs> we uh, checked the that's it. You know? that's we exactly had so much fun. Right. It was awesome. That was, that was, those were good times. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, sure. A song came on that we all couldn't sing to, and it was both gone. <laughs> and then we got some kind of Motown on there sure. where everybody could sing My Girl or something like that. Boy, that was it. So, yeah. So, all right. Oh, my, this scares me. Why? No. <laughs> Yeah, just Absolutely kidding. not. No, no. I, you know what? I can't top the Casey story. That was yeah, great. That was you know, a good one. Yeah. one of my favorite memories, um, Dan, was when we were in spring training together, and you were working out. Um, you wanted to run a few miles, and I was fortunate enough to run with you and Jim. And I happened to kick your butt. Yeah. You see. And see. You were going to Schmake. Who the heck Who is, is this that guy? guy? <laughs> you know? See. See. All right. So we're kind of looking up at where the overhang in right field would have been. Um, in right field, and, and uh, this is where Kirk Gibson used to patrol around. And uh, what are some of your fondest memories about about Gibby? Oh, there's no doubt he's a competitor, right? But one of my um, things I'll be forever grateful for was um, I learned how to drive a manual stick on Gibby because uh, after games there were so many crowds and things. He's like, hey, go get my car. And it happened to be a Porsche, right? I was going to say, what was it? it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I'd hop in that thing. I didn't know what the hell I was doing, but, you know, I got it there. Grinding? Grinding. Oh, yeah, I ground I grind Give me air that? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Gip. <laughs> no, I, love, I love that. Yeah, getting his car ready. And, getting his car ready. You and know? he, he and always just... drove the speed limit, if I remember right, too, right? Uh, I think so. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> How about you, Dave? I was to call him, like, the enforcer. Like, he, he always wanted to put the fear in people and, like, Always on edge with him, like especially as a bad boys. I, I cleaned his locker, so if something wasn't perfect, like you know, he, he would he would give you a little edge. But he, it was it was fun. But uh, one particular day uh, during the '84 season, the guys were having a lot of fun, and they weren't getting out for batting practice at a, at a time when they, uh, Coach Consola wanted them to. So Coach Consola had a whistle that he started blowing about 10 minutes before we were supposed yeah. to go out there, and so he's blowing a whistle every day, about two days, three days. And uh, I think the, you guys were getting a little annoyed with this sound in the locker room because he, he wasn't shy about it. He blowed his whistle, and uh, Gibby got tired of it. And he took the whistle one day, and he, he took his bat, and he kind of opened the opening and get the ball. He took the ball out of it and pounded it back so it looked normal, and he put it back in the locker. <laughs> so then when uh, the next day came and Coach Billy went to blow this whistle, none came out but air. And, all the players had a riot, and it was so funny. And did Billy ever figure out who did it? Or? I don't think he did. God rest his soul. Like I love Billy. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was a heck of a group, and and we were all very dedicated, and that was some of the best times of my life. And and that's really you know certainly again I'm very privileged to to have experienced that. But being with with the group of guys that we were with, Dave, Bobby, Michael, Dave Rusco, Dom Nito. I mean, it, it was incredible. 
it just shows you how, and I'm from California, just yeah. how special that 84 season was for me. I moved here to Michigan full time and still have, oh, you yeah. know, these relationships with the guys that were just a couple years younger than me, but we're still together and, and still see everybody. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a wonderful good. time. So, Absolutely. But thanks guys so much Thank for, you, Dan. for thanks being here today. Thank and you. thanks for sharing the memories. This has yeah. been a lot of fun. Great. Thank you. Tigers are the champions of 1984. The Tigers have won the World Series.